It's Will Sean Podcast. The internet cried out for two more blowhards, and they courageously answered that call. Armed with the weapon of wit, each week they're joined by guests to discuss movies, television, pop culture, and anything else that's pissing them off. Take it away, boys. I'm Will Link. And I'm Sean David. And this is Will Sean Podcast? When I said Van Morrison, I clearly meant Morrissey. How you doing, Will? So... I print these rundowns out each week for yeah. us. There's a little behind the scenes how the sausage is made. I print out a rundown of like some topics it's we're going to talk about. And I've been having major printing problems. This is the first time in major weeks. Major printing problems. I have two, uh, yeah. two, one for each of us. First, my printer at home yeah. hasn't been working. Well, it's a good thing you're a writer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's been it's been a mess. Like, why is it working? And I figured out it's because of the stupid fucking cable thing I ranted about last week. I need to reconnect this to the new. It was a fucking nightmare. But did you do it? I. It took me an hour to figure it out. Okay. An hour. It was like midnight. I wanted to print this out, and I was up for another hour trying to figure this out. Why you have a network printer in a small apartment? I don't understand. But moving on. It's it was cheap printer. I bought it, and yeah. it, it just it worked this way. I mean, what what do you want? I couldn't print out like the Alex Stein one. Oh, this is the thing. So, you remember I had trouble printing out the Alex Stein yes. one. All of a sudden, I try to print out the document today, the Megan Hayes document, and I start spitting out Alex Stein documents. Well, like, no, you're two weeks old. We don't need you. And I tried to print it out at work, like at the end yeah. of my shift one day. I'm like, let me just print this out before I go home. And the printer there jammed. And I'm like, I got to cancel this printer because I don't want all of a sudden later but people like, what the? They're still fuck reading is Alex this? Stein documents over yeah, there in the office. Yeah, probably in my office. Like, who is this Alex Stein? Um, so, uh, what is going on in the world of Will Sean Podcast? Eh, the usual. Make sure you are subscribed to us on iTunes. Give us a star rating. Leave us a few kind words, or a few more kind words, if you are so inclined. Um, follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Tell your friends. Spread the word. And do all the general things that a good podcast listener is supposed to do. And you'll do all those things because you are a good podcast listener. They all are. The best. Um, and who is our sponsor this week? Golden showers bring May flowers, and May flowers bring bizarre foreign policy initiatives. Oh, it's going to be a fun four years. Yeah. A lot of wet works in the next four uh, years. You know, listen, it's just going to be raining gold. Speaking of gold, on the show today, it's the Golden Glow. Oh, look at that. We are going to talk about the winners. We're going to talk about the losers. We're going to talk about Meryl Streep. And we're going to talk about somebody I got a big problem with. Who Damien is, Chazelle? Who is deeply involved <laughs> in the Golden Globes. I have no problem with Damien. You have a problem with Damien Chazelle because you got a thing for his girlfriend or whatever. Well, good on her. Um, as long as she doesn't get in the way of his art because then she will be ditched immediately. But first... We are very excited to break it down. A returning champion to the show. The amazing, talented, wonderful, beautiful actress. Chicken and dumplings. (laughs) Megan Hayes. What's up, boys? Hello. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back, guys. I'm really excited to talk about the Globes. Now, since you were on last, which we should have got the number of your episode, but we didn't. 106, let's say. That, sounds that is not about that sounds right. wrong, <laughs> completely wrong. Uh, but when we had you on last, and since then we've all become like real life friends. Yes, this is great. Look like at that. totally real More life. More behind friends. the scenes that we don't actually know. Most of the people that show up on the <laughs> end up on this show. It's pretty great. But uh, you stuck with us. I did. I like you guys both very much. Uh, even though sometimes we're assholes. Oh. Always. <laughs> we even have now in jokes, and I'm sure the listeners are enjoying, like chicken dumplings. Yes, and which like is that. apparently happening at my house. If you guys think I'm cool enough, hair appointment. I know. <laughs> I know. Um. So <laughs> the verdict's still out. Let's get just a really brief for our new listeners. A really brief reintroduction to you. You are seven rig- words or less. Yeah. You're well. You're originally from Georgia. I am. Hey, y'all. And how long have you been out here in L.A. now? Three years. And But you've made other stops along the way? You took the night train? <laughs> and then to leave it on the midnight train? Midnight train. That's, that's actually one. to Georgia. Ah. So if I like go, leave in the middle of the night and move back, that's how it's going to happen. When you go home to Georgia, do you take the midnight train? I don't. I don't take a train. That would take days. <sighs> I take a flight, usually American. <laughs> and you came out here 
because you are an actor. Yes, and I wanted to pursue the dream. And how's it going? Good. It's good so far. I feel like since we had you on last, you when we had you on last, you had just done this play in Atlanta. Yes. Uh, that had this amazing run. Oh, yeah, it was great. Sex with Strangers. I mean, how can you not love that? Or Sex with Strangers. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we talked previously, you've been in a Hunger Games film. Yes, you've Catching been, Fire. You've done a lot of stuff. Um, so how, what's been going on since? Weren't you filming something else in Atlanta since you were last Not Atlanta. Time? I've filmed a, two films since last we spoke. One is a really funny comedy about this guy. Well, it's got a, it doesn't have a title. It's Untitled uh, Tyler Falvo Project. But it's about okay. a, gen, a guy who's waiting for their UPS package to, or it's not UPS, a UPS-esque okay. uh, package to arrive. And the shenanigans that he has to go through to get the pack, said package. It's really funny. And then I shot a, a thriller called Haven's End in December um, about when the apocalypse hits and everybody flees Atlanta. Um, or uh, Four friends flee Atlanta. It's like, basically a Walking Dead spinoff. Yeah, but there's no zombies. Okay. It's, it's really just uh, like... Um, Cities get attacked. The CDC blows up in Atlanta, and so we have to evacuate. And we find this trailer uh, in a you know in the woods, and nothing good happens in the trailer. Nothing good ever happens in a trailer nope, in the woods. It doesn't, Your Honor. And my and my character just she goes through a lot. If okay, you name it, it probably happens to her. I can't really reveal much more though. Okay, so but. we won't start naming things because no, people but will know. <laughs> what is it? Dark and upsetting, or is it funny and lighthearted? No, it's dark and scary. Did you have to go to some dig to some dark places for this role? I did actually. It was okay. kind of fun. I mean, I, I love that's what I live for. Okay. I love digging nice well, and a dark places. Uh, and a crock pot. <laughs> yes, that's all I need. <laughs> dark feelings in a crock pot. <laughs> but even like a lot of your humorous essays. Oh, uh, they're dark as shit. Yeah, they yeah. go to some dark places about your family or your life or things like. Well, of course, your life. All. <laughs> <laughs> what else would you, you say? <laughs> he said it like, 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 oh shit! I'm glad I'm not you. I'm glad. I know. It totally had this look yeah. of like, God, thank God. We heard about well, the, I mean, we heard about what? the dog and the dad in the same month. It was more <laughs> six about, weeks. It was more about like, of course, well, it's about your you, life. Yeah. What else are you writing personal essays? But about? he did kind of sit back with this oh, like, right. sucks to be Meg look on his face. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so no, I do. Meg, I think I do. I do have. I like a dark streak. Okay. Um, now you also... Yes. This holiday Not season... Not as dark. <laughs> yeah, this holiday season, you were all over my television. Oh, every, that's right. Yes. Yeah, please every, get off. Every time I'd uh, be sitting at home and I was watching TV live <laughs> like a sucker instead of just recording on my DVR, I kept seeing this Best Buy commercial that you were in. And every time I saw it, I said, that's Megan Hayes. I know you texted me during the World Series. You're yeah. like, you and everybody on, on the in the world just yeah. saw you on television. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and it was a well-watched World Series. It was a very yeah. well-watched. So uh, so you filmed the Best Buy commercial. Not dark at all. No. Uh, where, did like, you go to some dark places? No, I did not go to any dark that places. That little room in the back where they show off all the speakers? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you get re- did you get recognized for the Best Buy commercial? Because pl- a lot, but you're not... I mean, she's in- not slow from progressive. But you're not instantly recognizable no 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 in fact it like took me a second to even because you're like you're wearing like glasses and you're you're like the felicity jones of commercial actresses oh hey i like that (laughs) or the sarah paulson if you will um well no i did well i didn't get recognized by strangers but i had people from high school like email me and text me and facebook me and all that so no that commercial played a lot it was a christmas commercial is there a chance it'll play next Christmas? Ooh, I hope so. Like the Cadbury egg commercial? <laughs> Would that be great? I love the Cadbury egg commercials. <laughs> <laughs> no, what was the? Thanks, Easter Bunny. What was the, <laughs> what's the commercial audition process like? Like, what did they have you? Like, what were they looking for? Or was it you know? Because I know a lot of auditions we have actors on. They go in and it's fifty other men or women that look just like them. This was different. Okay. I mean, well, they were looking for a character type, okay. and when I and I didn't think I really kind of fit the bill, but mm-hmm. then I got called back, and at callbacks, it was interesting because every single there's only maybe eight because there's only one yeah. person in the spot. There's maybe eight of us at callbacks or yeah. ten. We all looked very different. Okay, very different in size, shape, height, look. You know, so fit. they were just looking for for unique looks, not like they didn't have anything specific in mind. I guess not. Okay. And then I went in and did the callback. And the line was different. Okay. And then they put me on a veil for it. And then they, I had to go in for a second uh, 
callback even. Okay. And then that afternoon I booked it. So how long does this process take from like the first audition to actually booking it? Let's see, not long. Like okay. I would maybe a week and a half. I think okay. I auditioned for it, then maybe like four four days. And that's actually kinda long. Like four days later yeah. I got a call back and then I got a call back on a Friday. Yeah. And then I or maybe a Thursday, and then I didn't hear anything by Friday or Saturday. So and you're then, like, all right. Well, no, yeah, and I figured I didn't get it. And then well, even my actually my aunt passed away. Oh. And so on Saturday I called my commercial agent and I was like, Hey, I'm gonna fly back to Atlanta to spend yeah. a couple of days with my mom. Yeah. And is that cool? He's like, Yeah, I'm sure you're fine because the yeah. avails would have gone out for Best Buy. Yeah. And but then lo and behold, I'm in Atlanta, of course, and Monday I get a call and he's like, You're on a veil for the spot. You may have to fly back tomorrow. Can you? And so we we're kind of yeah. navigating that. But then he called me on Tuesday and was like, um, you have to go to a second callback. And so my flight landed at 10 a.m. And I had to be at my second callback by 1130. Jeez. So my roommate came and picked me up at the airport and brought all my clothes so yeah. I could like get ready in the car, drop me off. And it was like totally out of a movie. Yeah. Uh, I get there at 1126. Yeah. And it's packed with old people. And it's obviously they're casting not my. Where was this at? Um, at a casting director okay. place in Studio City. So it's like this tiny little waiting room, yeah. the really long hallway with three different casting rooms yeah. or four, and it's packed with these old people. And um, so I'm like, obviously they're casting not my spot. Spot yeah. they're waiting around for me. So I'm like, hey, um, you guys, I am here, and yeah. like everybody's just kind of like, mm. and um, so I sign in, and then like from the back, I hear someone shout, "Is Megan Hayes here yet?" <laughs> And I'm like, I'm here, I'm here. Right as somebody else comes out and goes, okay, all my grandparents, I need you to all come back. <laughs> I, need you to, I need you to all come back. Because, you know, they show you what you do to yeah. everybody, what, so yeah. they don't have to do it over and over again. So I'm literally, like, hopping and go, trying to get around. You're just stepping over the little oh, gen- like this the last little generation. man with a walker. The greatest generation means nothing to you. <laughs> and the guy's like, hurry, hurry. And I'm like, I'm coming. I'm like trying to excuse myself around yeah. like all these old people who are trying to, yeah. like one woman's helping her husband I up. I have enough hours to get to the guild. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty much, that's exactly what it was. It was like, you could not have like written it better. It We're was hilarious. We're the next rapping granny. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you get in there. Okay, so. So I get in there and I do, at this time it's not for, it's just a redo. So yeah. um, it's just the casting person. It's not yeah. the whole team of people. They put me on, on tape. I do, you know, a few takes. And then a couple hours later, I found out. It's That's pretty awesome. fast. TV and commercials, the t- turnaround's pretty well, fast. Well, yeah, I was going to say, because they, they're, they're trying to get these things out there. Fast. Now, fast. you knew it was for Best Buy. Did you know it was going to be a big national commercial? or Well, you knew it was a holiday spot, so you must have assumed. Yeah, because they were like, you're going to, they're nutcrackers making you breakfast. That okay. was like the thing. They're like, walk your dog. Yeah. And then they were like, and then come into your kitchen, and nutcrackers are making you breakfast. So this wasn't a porno? <laughs> no, I wish. The um, so. But I knew it was a Christmas spot. I knew it was a campaign that they do, were casting several spots. Do they tell you like, oh, heads up, your commercial is going to start airing this week? No. Or do you just to be like when when I text you like I just saw your your face during the World Series? That's when. Yeah, my best friend texted me. Yeah. Was the first person, and then half an hour after he texted me, uh, my commercial agent actually, who's yeah. he's amazing, like was like your commercial's playing. I just saw it. Yeah. So awesome. So that was a very good story you Thank told you. us. Thanks. Because you are also an accomplished storyteller. <laughs> you stop. And that's how we no, met. We stop. do. We did. We do shows around town. We've done that's shows true. together. We've done a lot of shows at Muse. Oh yeah, together. Muse on Eighth. Muse on Eighth. At least my Muse. Um, uh, uh, hosted by Oscar. Oscar Sagasumi. Say it again. Is it? It's Oscar Sagasumi, right? I think it's yeah. Sagasumi. Yeah, he's going to kill me. I have trouble with his name all the time. But I have trouble with that. everybody's name yeah. all the time. Um, Oscar. And you have a new show. That but you're doing it. Oh, yes. Oscar yes. and I are hosting a show starting January 25th. Doing a show together. Now, yes. what is the name of the show? Tales from Tinseltown. And is it tales about living and working in Hollywood? Yeah, it's airing all of Hollywood's dirty laundry. So it's we're getting storytellers, but we're also trying to get... Um, Actors, producers, directors, people who aren't typical storytellers to come in and air all their dirty laundry about Hollywood. It's going to be great. So, um, and where is this going to be? It's at Three Clubs, and it's the last Wednesday of every month at 8 p.m. Where's Three Clubs? Uh, It's down on uh, Vine. Okay. In Santa Monica and Vine, right? I think so. It's in Hollywood. All right. You just want that weird fringy part of Hollywood on Santa Monica Boulevard. No, 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 no. It's it's almost almost to Sassafras, where Sassafras is on Hollywood and Vine. 
Okay. Anyway, you'll figure it out. Just Google three clubs. Yeah, or, or also... Can I, is it time to plug the handles? Oh, you could plug it. I'm plugging the handles, guys. So I'm it's Tails the... Tinseltown. <laughs> That's Tail. it. On on Twitter and on uh, oh, Instagram. Oh, it's got its own tweet thing. Yeah, hand, handle? It's called a handle, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this, we just got our handles today. Okay, so I'm going to start following that, and so should you. I'm very excited to check this show out. Yeah, Tails like, Tinseltown. Like you said, it's the last Wednesday, Wednesday, of, the Wednesday month. of the month. Every month. Every month. Mm-hmm. And their drink specials, Ooh. the Oscar and the Megan. Uh, what is the Megan comprised of? The Megan is a classy martini, and the Oscar is a shot of Cuervo. <laughs> <laughs> Dropped into a vat of tortacha. Of what? It's not like Mexican, so it's a... What is, what, I didn't hear what you it, said. Or, or, oh, what is that? It's like a, it's like a Mexican drink. It's like basically a Mexican orange crush. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, I, I like orange crush. Who doesn't like orange crush? Um, okay, so you got this new show, Tales of Tinseltown. The next question is, when am I performing in it? <laughs> Dude, March. He's got a thing. Well, no, it's actually the last. I have to take a test the last week of March. I April. Let this I'll do April for sure. Great, perfect. Oh, done. Okay, we'll April. Talk okay, yeah, April I'll talk for off sure. About yeah. The, but yeah, in fact, I'm we excited. Did, there might not be a podcast that week. Let's just sit That's in March. Fine. I took the same test. It takes a week to study for. You should, um, yeah, definitely come. You should come do it too. Okay. Just uh, text my agent. I will. I'll have my people call your people. Yeah, I don't okay. have people. April, I got a great story. I can't wait. About my manager. Oh, it's oh, good. Perfect. Great, great, this. great. Um, I might I might tell a J-Law story or two. Ooh. I love her. No, good. they're good stories. She's amazing. Okay. Okay, so uh, next thing. Yes. You're doing a show this coming Friday. Uh, the, the 19th. It's Friday. This coming Thursday. Oh yeah, we, yes, yes. A week, a week from. I know what I'm what doing. Is, no, what's today? Wednesday the 11th. Just trust me. <laughs> this coming Thursday. Oh, I know what you're doing. <laughs> yes, because I bomb, there's a, there's I bomb a delay. That so hard. Yeah, time is complicated. I bombed. I'm sorry, Will. So coming up on Thursday, the 19th, <laughs> which is if you're listening to this podcast the day it comes out, is the next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Time is a complicated system, I understand. I'm an actress, I don't know who You're I am. You're performing in a show. Yes. Tell us about this show. It's called Using Their Words, and it's a night of great American speeches. So mm-hmm. it's on the 19th, it already, the 19th already sold out, so they added a show on the 20th, and um, it's at the Ruby Theater. And it's basically a bunch of actors, and we're going to get to, we're reading famous American speeches. Okay. So it's kind of a, you know, all the proceeds um, go to... Oh, what do they go to? Oh, Southern Poverty Law Center. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so what uh, what speech are you doing? I'm doing Nora Ephron's spe- commencement speech. She did. She made it Wellesley in 1996. An excerpt from who that. Who is doing Donald Trump making fun of the reporter? Uh, no one. <laughs> okay. It's kind of a. It's kind of in protest <laughs> to all of that. So, ah, yeah. Mm. And so doing the Obama. Obama to the Democratic National Convention. There's going to be a ton, like Obama and Hillary. And, you, and everybody picked what they wanted to do. Yes. Did they well, have- we had to give our top three. Okay. What was in? What else was in your top three? If you, I my ask. number one was the Nora Ephron, and my second, my number two was uh, Sojourner Truth, uh, Ain't I a Woman? Okay. Uh, it's just a, a, a great speech. And the third one was a little off the beaten path. Is um. And that was an excerpt from Arthur Miller's Lifetime Achievement Award speech that he made at the Tonys in 1999, I think. Okay. And I, I remember watching it, and he basically, uh, in his speech, talks about how um, because of capitalism and the way things are, uh, a new Arthur Miller probably won't be discovered because it's not economical because his plays always have a ton of characters and he's no one knows who he is and... That his plays didn't star celebrities, and he's like, I think the past, it's just this whole thing about how everything has changed, and it, there should be a return to just <laughs> appreciate doing what's, me, bitches. Yeah, or just like a return to like just to do what's great, you know, and what's wonderful, so rather who, than what's going to sell tickets. Who will be doing Grover Cleveland's second inaugural, where he talks about tariffs? Um, I I don't know who's okay. going to be speaking about tariffs. <laughs> Sean, you got to get in the show and you have to do that. You got to plot. But some, I don't have like, enough time to get my mutton chop game like on point. <laughs> do it. You need some serious chops. Okay, do so yes. Megan, uh, <laughs> before we move on to the topics, why don't you tell everybody where they can find out all about you and where maybe they can get some more of this uh, information? Oh, absolutely. Well. 
um, you can find out anything about me at MeganHayes.net. And my Twitter handle is Megan underscore Hayes. And my Instagram is Megan Hayes Actor. Do I follow you on Instagram? I don't think you do. Okay. Do you take a lot of pictures? I do. It's the thing I do most is Instagram. Okay. I have not moved Snapchat yet. I'm on Snapchat. Are you? Yeah. You're not on anything but Twitter, right? I just tweet, baby. I'm all about the Twitter. Oh, I know. You tweeted about me when we'd see La La Land for the third time. I tweet <laughs> a lot. I know. You are in my feed. No, it's good. Your tweets are good. I'm a good tweeter. You're I give good, good tweets. You give good tweet. <laughs> so speaking of La La Land, let's talk about the Golden Globes. Yes. As that's why we're really here. And let's get right into it. La La Land won the most Golden Globes of all time. No shit. Yeah. Um, and Seven, which everything was nominated for. Yeah, yeah. it was a clean sweep. It swept. Sweep. That's yeah. amazing. The one thing I didn't think it would sweep or win was screenplay. And as much as I love La La Land and I love La La Land, I don't think it's a movie about its writing. It's a well-written movie, but I don't think it's a movie about its writing. And I'm kind of surprised it won screenplay, but it just shows you like the heart on the Hollywood Foreign Press ad for La La Land. I forgot what else was up for screenplay. Uh, Moonlight, Manchester oh, by the Sea, uh, Nocturnal Animals. Creatures. Nocturnal <laughs> Animals and... Um, I can't remember well, what the fifth was. Well, Moonlight and Manchester are both extraordinarily written exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah. So I expected them to maybe spread the love a little bit more and give like Kenneth Lonergan or Barry Jenkins a screenwriting award. Yeah, but Kenneth Lonergan's a damn genius. I've lo- I love his plays. But no, it won uh, everything. That that I mean, but that's no real surprise, Sean. Because no, it's- but here's the big question: Is La La Land peaking too early? Because I'm already seeing the La La Land backlash. Because Oscar nominees have already been settled. They haven't been announced yet. But the nominees are already, all the ballots are in. But voting hasn't begun yet. Well, I find, personally, to be the best gauge for what's going to win Oscars are the SAG Awards. Well, that's... a better gauge than Golden Globes, I find. That's not... Well, here's the thing. Because it's a union voting. I, the, I, I, what, I don't know what the well, reason is. Well, so they make is. up the largest block of a Well, that's voters. And, and they're, they're a union and they're voting and they're, they get to vote in the Oscars, many of them. But here's the, the thing where, here's the wrinkle. La La Land isn't nominated for Ensemble, which is basically SAG's best picture. Right. So, but both its leads were nominated. Right, and, and it's not an ensemble piece. Well, that's the, that's the thing. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's two people, it basically, two in people, the whole yeah. movie. Well, and John Legend. And John Legend pops John. up. And, uh, and the, guy, the guy who plays his sister. Rosemary but, DeWitt. Yes, for, but she's oh, that's wonderful. Right, she's in there for two scenes. Yeah, uh, they're, like, they're barely in it, yeah. But, the, so... Don't forget the Tom Everett Scott, that thing you do. Who did he was The he? husband. Well, don't, oh, uh, that right. Don't oh. give it away for people who have... I didn't say whose husband. It could be Ryan Gosling's husband. Come on. It, is Ryan. <laughs> it is Ryan Gosling's husband. Big oh. twist. Boom. He's gay. So, Boom. So, Spoiler. But here's the thing. There's, the, there's only one film that didn't get a SAG Ensemble nomination that ever went on to win Best Picture, and it was Braveheart. But I could definitely see this... I mean, I don't know if La La Land's going to win Best Picture. Oh, I think I it, think there's a bad. I don't think it will. I th- it might. You think, I don't, it's a weird think, because the Golden Globe split between comedy and drama. It's not a really good indicator. It's not a good indicator because Moonlight won Best Drama Picture after not winning anything. All but it night. wasn't nominated. I mean, there was that weird alien. So there was yeah, the Best was Supporting weird. Actor in a Drama Film. He Aaron Taylor won. Johnson won for Nocturnal Animals, which uh, we've all dis- as we've discussed, he probably won't get an Oscar nom for that. And that will most likely go to Marasha Ali. I think he's going to win the Oscar. I think Marasha Ali's going to win the Oscar. I think he should. And we think, he Barry should. Jo- and we think Barry Jenkins is going to win, that Moonlight may win Best Adapted Screenplay for this. Yes. Oh, yes, and, yes. And Lonergan from Manchester by the Sea is going to win Best Original. Original Screenplay. By the way, we're already blowing our Oscar episode when we go through the nominees. And we haven't even gotten the nominees yet. We've decided uh, as well. We're just guessing. But that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah. But Every best picture, almost every best picture, that becomes a period where it does get a backlash, where it does get this well, kind of. This year's weird because the front runner, and once again, this goes back to the Golden Globes splitting their genres. Um, 
usually it's a serious drama film that's a front runner for the last like that's comedy the musical why, was the artist that won best picture that's why I think that La La Land may not win best picture because right. it isn't serious it's, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's, you know what I mean the deck it's is not, stacked against it because it, yeah it swept the Golden Globes in all of that but that's usually considered the lesser category I mean for better or for worse it is that's why they announced best drama is the last, last award right because that's the big because usually that is the film that will go on to if you Moon, know if Moon like Moonlight, last year was uh, what won the Golden Globe for best drama was it also um, Spotlight yeah, yeah Spotlight. Was Spotlight why do I keep saying I want to say broadcast news I'm like no it's not broadcast. oh my god <laughs> but I love though. broadcast news <laughs> okay we can talk about broadcast news all day but let's stick to we'll this, do this. a broadcast news pod later yeah. if, but if Moonlight wins best picture that's yeah. I'm gonna be thrilled I think that's a fantastic movie and I think, oh, I think it's a fantastic movie too but you like La La Land well you would vote for La La Land I do, well I mean I don't have to here's the thing I don't have the uh, I don't have to choose between, I don't have to Sophie's Choice it for the SAG Awards because Best Ensemble are you I'm assuming you're going to vote for Moonlight then for Best Ensemble because I think that's the definition of a great ensemble that well uh, Fences is also the definition of a great ensemble too oh, I haven't seen that yet oh, it's marvelous it's it's excellent I mean it's, that's a, it's a very hard well, I mean Hidden Figures is a really good ensemble that, now that I want to have. I'm not obviously not voting till I see everything, but I've seen. <laughs> we'll, oh we'll God, hidden fences. So okay, so <laughs> La La Land is the big is the big winner. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Won best actor and enjoy that award. You're not winning best actor. No, <laughs> he's not. Stars. He'll get nominated. Who's though. not going to win best Gosling. actor? Gosling. No, he's not. Yeah. But and he had a fun. His speech was great though because he had that fun little. Uh, a side about Ryan Reynolds, which yeah. was funny. Two oh, Canadian and he, Ryans. And, and then, cutting up the Golden Globe was cute. Yeah. And then uh, with uh, talking about Eva Mendez. He's oh. his lady. I, he's his, and sweetheart. He called yeah. her sweet. Oh, that's like if you. Are they? There was a little bit of discussion here. Are they married? Because IMDb didn't say anything. I don't think they're married. I don't think they're married. I think they just have. They live together in sin. She's Ugh. older, too, by the way. Well, he likes I, older women. Good. He's always been with older women. I'm a fan of older women. Because he was with um, uh, Sandra Bullock at one point. That's right. As my yeah. friend Robert likes to say, if you cross the L's in Bullock, it spells buttock. Just throwing and, that out there. Okay, and, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> and Robert um, is a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, proctology. So Ra- a, Ryan uh, Gosling uh, likes older ladies. Yeah, yeah Ryan Gosling. Him and ta- Aaron Taylor Johnson. Aaron Taylor Johnson loves older ladies. I am a fan of any boy that likes older ladies. Um, okay. Emma Stone also. Now here's the thing. Also likes older ladies. Now Emma Stone. <laughs> she was talking to Isabel Huppert afterwards. We that. we had a um, a little back and forth of will Emma Stone win the Oscar? I think she might. Yes. And I said, I don't know. I feel like they're going to give it something a little more to maybe a Jackie, like or Natalie Portman. Ad- I don't think Natalie Portman's going to win. Well, I think Natalie Portman's her main competition. So then Amy and Ad- and then uh, then um, <laughs> Amy uh, Adams. You don't think Emma but- Stone is going to win? Yeah, but it could. They could Amy Adams it like they could uh, the color no. of money. Amy Adams. No, she's not at that point yet. And son of a woman, not ready for her son of a woman. And I don't think a no. This isn't like a lifetime. Like "Ah, we owed it for you. Oh, we should have given her five times before. Yeah, she'll get it. But here you go. She'll get one eventually because she's got a ton of nominations with no win. She's got such good chops. But I Glenn Close though, same. I feel like a Ryan. Glenn Close killed that bunny. I won't be ignored, Dan. <laughs> um, but Arrival, I don't think is, I don't think they look at it. It's, it's like too genre. Movie. It's yeah. too genre to give her. And then Nocturnal Animals is a little too, I mean, she's more of a supporting actress in that. Yeah, that's yeah. more, everybody's kind of supporting in that. Um, but here's the thing. And this is where the Golden Globes does make a difference. It puts you out there. It gets people watching you. It gets people maybe watching your movie, putting your screeners in. But Emma Stone gave a great speech. Yeah. She sure did. She gave a great speech, and it's after she gave that speech, I'm like, oh shit, maybe she will win Best Actress because that was a hell of a speech, and people are going to remember that and be like, oh, we want to see. And also, Emma it's kind of in a weird way. It's like, eh, it's her. Tr- she's up and coming. She's been putting the time in. She's had like a string of hits and like solid performances. She's and, a great actress. Yeah, she's it, fabulous yeah. in Birdman. I wanted her to win for Birdman. 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 Um, it won. <laughs> La La Land also won director, and, and Chazelle's gonna Damien Chazelle's he's gonna win best director. Yeah, so? for I feel sure. like there may be a little backlash against him. No, no, for because sure. what's, what win. are they gonna give it to? I mean, Silence. Here's no, the <laughs> BFG. Here's the thing. <laughs> no, but here, here's the thing. Seriously, uh, Moonlight. That's a great directing achievement. Uh, Manchester by the Sea, a beautifully yeah. directed film, but. 
only one of the big contending films is a real showy yeah. art. Like, there's a lot of art. There's a lot of... It's a well-directed musical, and oh. there's a lot of artistry in it. There's yeah. a lot of artistic decisions that he made in that film. Don't, that don't count out Ang Lee, the long halftime walk of Billy Flynn. Yeah, we'll count that out. Yeah, okay. the, uh, well, the opening number of La La Land is, I mean, incredible. I mean, and they're going to give it to the... I mean, look at the people who always went. It's in always your, a flash year. Yeah, yeah, in your Ritu one the last yeah. couple of years. Um, uh, Two years in a row. Birdman. Yeah. Can we can we like do a redo on the Birdman? Yeah. I love Birdman. Birdman has problems. We'll get into it off the show because we've gotten into it on the show before. <laughs> All right. Um, and I've gotten into it, I think, at barbecues at your I'm house. I'm about actually. to get into it with you like right now, but I'll hold off. Well, let's move on. Casey okay. Affleck won for Best Actor. He should. He, he, uh, he oh, sorry. Win. Just finishing up the Best Actress conversation. Uh, Isabel Huppert won for Elle. Well, yeah. And, and, I have not seen Well, Elle. let's talk about Let's, then oh, yeah, let's just talk finish about Isabel Huppert. Real Huppert. fast. I don't think she will win for Oscar because people are going to well no because people are going to pop that movie and be like oh I should check this out the opening scene is very rough and very upsetting and I could see half the audience just saying I can't watch this I'm turning this off yeah more I mean, rough than the accused it's a rough opening scene rougher than that the scene from the accused well I think the I think the I think the thing with Elle, and this is what's going to turn people off, and this is why when me and Sean went to... Subtitled. (laughs) When me and Sean went to a screening of Elle and Isabel Humbert was there, there were people still walking out of the movie because it's not just because she's raped in the movie. It's because... While her cat watches. It's because of... Yeah, but it's because of things like that. Like... We focus on the cat watching the rape. It's all these like... Oh, Jesus. It's all these... In the opening like two minutes. It's all these little somewhat cheeky filmmaking things yeah. that they're doing about how she handles this rape and then you know she makes some choices yeah. after she's raped and she makes are, choices like force whitaker made choices in rogue one yeah she makes some <laughs> oh she makes some choices like riz ahmed makes and this is the night of yeah yeah she makes some choices you and want a tattoo give you a tattoo give you a prison tat <laughs> So so that's so that may be so I don't think she'll win. But I think she's going to get nominated. Yeah, but I don't think she's going to win. But weirder things have happened. Marion Cotillard. Oh my God! Though Love and Rose was singing and being she wasn't being raped. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's Edith Piaf. I mean, that's yeah. and she's unbelievable yeah. in that. Well, Isabel Humbert won, and it was well deserved. I I thought it was going to be between her and Natalie Portman, and then but Portman. I don't think Natalie heat. Portman's going to win. Yeah. Portman. Here's how Portman could get heat back if she wins at SAG. All right, well, we'll see. Um, if but we knew a SAG voter. Uh, we do, do we know a SAG voter? No. It's me. Will you say who you're voting for? For best actress? Um, I will, well, I, I'm not, I'm not, I have not watched enough films yet to vote for that category, but I do know some that I'm voting for, for sure. Okay. okay. Uh, I have, I make, I like, I take it very seriously. As you should. If I had a vote in these things, I Elle would watch Fanning, everything. Haley Steinfeld, Edge of 17. Just saying. She's not nominated. She's not nominated. Nominator. But... I do know who I'm torn with for best picture or best ensemble. Okay, so best actor. Yes. So best actor. Oh, let's just say one fast yeah. thing while we're talking about Isabelle Humbert. Um, some really bad staging where they left this poor French woman, <laughs> uh, you know, who's speaking broken English on stage as they just played the music and nobody helped her off stage. Oh, she God. just kept talking. Yeah, and, and talking. there wasn't one Stallone daughter anywhere to be seen. And there uh, were three. Yeah. Um, Casey Affleck. Yeah, Jesus ex- of Boston. He's extraordinary. He's full man bun mode. He's filming the uh, sequel to uh, I'm Not There. What is he filming? <laughs> what is I don't know. Like he just looks like a garbage man. Let's talk about Casey. Casey Affleck, the word on the street about Casey Affleck was that he does not give good speech. And his speech wasn't anything great. Well, and people keep saying that's going to hurt him down the road. Well, like he he's got well, Denzel he's, Washington, my man. Yeah, he's, Denzel gave him the thumbs up. Oh, yeah, he did. Well, here's the... Okay, this is where I... That might, might cause a lot of controversy yeah. with what I'm about to say, but, like, Casey Affleck's performance is extraordinary yeah. in Manchester by the Sea. You know, I have to vote for these guys. Yeah. And Denzel Washington's performance is extraordinary. They're doing, yeah. doing two very different things. Two, they're doing very different things. One of them's rolling the plane. But here's, but here's, <laughs> the, here's the thing, though. Like, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to separate the man from their work and these sexual harassment charges that are against Casey Affleck right. is, it's hard. I mean, 
it's, I mean, it's the whole like Woody Allen thing. It's like, how much do you separate Just the art from the Just have a few drinks, crawl into bed, and you'll come to a good conclusion. <laughs> the Woody Allen. But do you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow sometimes. I always say this when the Woody Allen thing, because the Woody Like every Allen four days, it seems like. Is a very different thing. There's a lot of gray area in the Woody Allen thing. Casey Affleck's thing is very different because he actually settled these things. Which right. Which is kind of this, I mean, I don't want to say it's an admission of guilt, because some people just settle if they have the money just to get rid of the the headache or the publicity. But this probably happened. This happened when he, they were filming I'm Still Here. Yeah, not I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, is it I'm Still Here? I don't know. One of them is a Bob Dylan movie by it's Todd Haynes. Not one of them, the Bob Dylan movie, right? It's not right? the Bob Dylan movie. <laughs> I'm Still Here is the Joaquin Phoenix yeah. documentary. It's not a documentary. It's the weird thing. If you remember Joaquin Phoenix did this weird performance art thing years ago where he was like going to become a rapper. Oh, Casey, yeah. That's and the Casey Affleck, He went on all the shows and Casey Affleck directed now, it. Now, this that's sounded right, right. like, and this is an excuse for what he did, but this sounded like this was a fucking batshit crazy. Everyone just acting purely on id production, which does not justify anything that he did. But do you think it's one of the reasons why this has gotten more swept under the rug that people look at it as like this weird fucking thing that was going on. Not that we should accept that, but do you think that's why some people accept it? I, I, I don't know. I think we should watch I'm Still Here. Why do you, why do you, well, do you think this is going to hurt him, these allegations? Because um, either going to be him or Denzel. Here's the thing. It's, it, and I, I, I know whose performance I think deserves it more, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. And it, that's what's the hard is it? I think Casey should win. Really? Okay. If you think, but if Casey continues to be a little weirdo, but it's hard for me to do that to yeah. like get behind that. I, I know that's weird. I that's, guess in our Oscar picks, whoever wins at SAG is who you have to pick because it's it's yeah. a coin toss. It really is. These acting races. I think La La Land is going. Now, to is there anyone cool. else that we can think of? I mean, that would get nominated or has any chance? That has now? a chance. No. See, that's why I say I think La La Land to me is still the runaway for best picture but these acting races are going to be tricky they're tricky the and also I mean Denzel's and Casey Affleck's are just both uh, I mean uh, extraordinary yeah. and like when I went to a talk this is what's uh, this is what's hard is like I went to a talk back yeah. with Fences and like Denzel seems like a stand up great guy yeah. too I'm like he's won two Oscars I know. I think Casey's going to win it. I just, it's, it's, this is the quandary I get in. It's like separating we, the art from the, the man. The lesser Affleck. We already, geez. oh, I've always, he's always been my favorite Affleck. Okay. I always. think he's the better actor. He's the be- I, I, I've, I've loved him since he's, they're talking about you and your tootsie roll dick in uh, Good Will Hunting. Remember that? Yes. Okay, we got we got to start okay, moving this along. But Aaron Taylor Johnson, we already said that he beat Mahershala Ali. I don't even think Aaron Taylor Johnson's going to get an Oscar nomination. However, he did get a BAFTA nomination, so you oh, never know. Brits. Um, well, it's it's the most crossover in voting. Yeah. Um, Viola, Viola Davis, Viola, Viola Davis. Viola, yeah. Oh, she's got to win. She, yeah. I think, is the lock of the night both at the Oscars and was the lock of the night at the Globes. She'll win the SAG. She'll win the SAG. Uh, real fast. For Suicide Squad. Real fast. Mm-hmm. In Fences, is Viola Davis is a category fraud. Is she the lead actress and we're putting her in supporting just so she wins an Oscar? Well, that's the question because, like, I, you know, I've, now that I've seen most of the nominees yeah. for Best Supporting, at least for the SAG Awards, like, they're, it's, I mean, they're all extraordinary, but, like, Viola's got so much more, you know, camera time. Yeah. Well, she does because she's the female lead of that movie, but you would say Denzel is the lead character. I mean, Everybody's movie, kind of supporting around him. That movie him. is about him. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. Oh, but uh, she's, she's going to win. It doesn't matter. She's going to win. She's one of my favorite criers of all time, especially because the snot that just rolls down her nose. Well, Tom Cruise is a pretty good crier. Tom Cruise? Yeah. He is in Magnolia. Yeah, he's a good crier. Yeah. Holly Hunter is my very favorite. Okay. She's a great crier. Oh, she's my favorite. Not uh, Anne Hathaway when she got her hair shaved? Oh, you mean in Les Mis? Yeah. No. No, Holly Hunter's got great crying scenes in Raising Arizona and in Broadcast News. She's a good burster into tears. Yeah. Um, and Zootopia won Best Animated Film. No real surprise I there. Know. Moana's a better movie. I didn't see either, so. Uh. Moana hit me more emotionally. Oh, so, okay. Zootopia, I think, is trying for smarter things, if that makes any mm. sense. And that's why I Sean think... Sean doesn't like smarter things. <laughs> no, no, but like, Zootopia trying, I mean, was very heavy. I liked it when I saw it, but it didn't sit with me well, and it's very heavy-handed. I mm. just liked the idea that I went to go see an animated film that was about racial profiling. Like, I thought that was like... I, I, didn't, I thought it was subversive, and I didn't know that's what just I was getting into. wait till Despicable Me 3 comes out. I think Zootopia might even get an Oscar nomination for screenplay. 
I think there's mm. a chance. Okay. Mm. Um, okay, let's move to TV. The Crown won. We kind of knew The Crown was going to win because... Did we? Well, here's the I thing. I love The Crown. Here's the thing that the Globes like to do. They yeah. always like to give it to new shows. They do. They always do, which I kind of appreciate. I like that too. Yeah. But also The Crown, it's like, oh, you're new and you're like British and it's the Hollywood Foreign Press. And but there are some new... There were some new shows that didn't... Like Stranger Things. Stranger Things didn't get anything. No. But okay, but The Crown, so if you was a, is the Hollywood Foreign Press going to go for Stranger Things or The Crown... They're going to go for The Crown. I, yeah. I mean, it's the new Downton Abbey. But the Crown the crown is like if Downton Abbey and House of Cards had a baby. Okay. I think. Claire, you think? And her name is Lilibet. <laughs> Claire Foy won. Yeah. Oh, she's incredible. Claire Foy, who struck us, looked a little like Sarah Paulson. She did a little yeah. bit. Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> she kind of did. <laughs> um, Billy Bob Thornton won. Which for, I hear Goliath is amazing. I don't know. Just a David. I was just like a David E. Kelly procedural. I don't know anyone. Do you know anyone that's even checked out Goliath? No. Have you checked uh, out? Goliath? I have a friend who raves about it and All wants right. me to be on it. I like. Well, I mean, I want you to be on it. Doesn't mean I'm watching a show. <laughs> yeah, um, a friend of the pod, Nick Wexler's on Chicago PD. Doesn't mean we're watching that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, David E. Kelly is great. How does Billy Bob Thornton win this award, though? Oh, well. This is just like that weird thing. He went to a party and shook all 90 members of the Hollywood And that's it. Now, here's the real question. He's a great actor. Did he, he and Brad, did he and Brad Pitt have a little conversation backstage? About Jolie? Yeah. Like, oh. all right, buddy, come here. Let's talk. Um, no. No uh, way. They bust open a bottle of Moet. No way. I, I thought Remy Malik was going to win that award. For Mr. Robot? Yeah. You know, the second season wasn't as well received as the first season. No. But I thought they were going to do it because they didn't give it to him last year because they gave it to John Hamm because mm. it was John Hamm But Hamm's also, the one year. thing is that with movies, it's interesting. With the Golden Globes movies, they're the front runner to the Oscars. But with TV, they're, they're, behind. Are, they're behind. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to get ahead of... You know, they're always trying to look for the next big thing. Mm. You know, last they give it to Mozart in the Jungle. Oh, God, I love Mozart in the Jungle. High Life. High Life. High Life. They they found the next big thing with Atlanta, though. Yes. And they gave that. They also have this tradition of always giving the comedy and the comedy actors the same people. Yeah. Uh, Like a good example being Brooklyn Nine Nine. They gave it to Andy Samberg that year. They gave that show. I kind of love how they like newcomers, though. I really admire that. Well, Atlanta, do you, coming from Atlanta, do you watch Atlanta? I have not seen Atlanta, and I hear it's phenomenal. Yeah. You need to go watch and then come on another episode so we can discuss Atlanta. Yes. Tracy Ellis Ross won for Blackish. Friend of the pod. Friend, she doesn't even know it, but friend of the podcast, her, her, her publicist is friends of ours. Nice. We saw, oh. her, we saw her later that night. Nice. And she was uh, very happy that her girl won. Oh, that's great. Um, I also like that she said, like, this is 44 and it's great or whatever yeah. she yeah. said. It was a great speech. Um, People vs. OJ and Sarah Paulson won. No surprise there, but here's a surprise. But overdue. I'm glad she finally won, some, won a well, girl. Well, she won the Emmy. Right, but that's her first time for both. And did you? I don't know if you saw her in the red carpets. So I can't remember what year it was. Maybe last year, a year yeah. before. And they asked her, like, "Have you ever thought about this win- moment winning?" Yeah. It was a year she didn't win. And oh, she's was that like, for like American Horror Story? I think yeah. so. And it's like, have you thought about winning? And she's like, "Ever since I was a little girl." Yeah. And you're like, "Oh, come on, girl, win it." <laughs> um, but the night manager won everything else, which I'm, I didn't see. That. Also, I'm, neither none of us have seen none it. None of us have seen it. I'm sure it is a fine program. Is it HBO? It's BBC and, and AMC. And AMC, and AMC. AMC. Yeah. I, okay. I'm sure it is fine, but it again, this is this surprised a lot of people because people instead of Hugh Laurie, people were thinking John Lithgow or Sterling K. Brown. People yeah. were thinking, okay, look uh, uh, now here. Okay, speaking though, hey now, speaking of uh, hey fraud, not fraud, but John Lithgow should should have been a best supporting. He, he should not have supporting. Wait, he was up against it, Hugh Laurie. No, he was up against. He was not supporting. Was he? Against no, he was supporting. Oh. He was best actor. No, he wasn't. Are you sure? I will bet. I will bet. You want to make we'll giant money you. bets? It doesn't here. matter. I just want to make. Does like, this matter for anything? Well, it matters for what I'm about to say. No, I do want to bet. I want to bet, but I don't want to bet um, money. Oh yeah, we wrote it right here, Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, we have the nominees oh, here shit. right now. So, uh, but I also knew <laughs> J- that. Because, JK, y'all, JK. Because Tom Hiddleston <laughs> won lead actor. And he beat out much better actors oh, than Brian Cranston, he's, John Turturro, Gordon my, B. Vance. My, okay, my bad, my bad. He's nominated for for Best Actor for the SAG Awards, which I uh, thought was surprising. Oh, well, SAG, these things get weird with the Those way Those people the can go fuck themselves. No, he, no, hey, hey, that's me. Oh, I'm so, I'm so hey, sorry. Hey, hey, watch what it. What did you think of Hiddleston's speech? Uh, I thought it was bizarre. Deaf Everyone said it was horrible. It was so bizarre because he gets up well, there. He, just, he, he uh, mentioned Doctors Without Borders by their French name. 
He starts. <laughs> oh, is that what this yeah. is a fault? Yeah. <laughs> he starts talking about. God. This children in South Sudan. South Sudan. Maybe he didn't talk about children, but he's no. He did. Then they cut to the Stranger Things children because they were oh, the kids right. of the audience. You know, the oh my god, god that's audience. amazing. Little that's Millie right. Bobby Brown needed a close up. Oh, and Bob. then Millie. we get to the. Then he talks about how in the South Sudan they watched a night manager and it gave them joy. Like I thought he was just going to give a passion, but, but then he plugged his thing. He did. Them. He plugged well, at least himself. He referred to South Sudan as the youngest of all countries. Did he? Yeah. I don't remember that. And then he had to like apologize after the fact. Yeah, no, his... people were giving him a lot of shit about yeah. it. It's like, you know, shut up and go be Loki. But most Either of the speeches You know what this good. means? He lost his James Bond chance right there. He shot his James Bond shot. No. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, he's not going to be James Bond. I want to be James Bond. Wouldn't that be a good James Bond? No. Damn. <laughs> you... Will Link coming in hot. You know who could be James Bond? <laughs> Ryan Gosling because he's Canadian, which is a Commonwealth country. Oh, it's because I'm not British? Yeah, yeah, that's the number one thing. I know, but oh, number one, what's the number two thing, Will Link? Coming Red in hair. really hot, <laughs> savage. <laughs> okay, let's AF. let's talk about some of the ins and outs of the show real fast. Uh, Hugh Grant, looking rough. Looking rough. Looks like he needs a little tranny love. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry, it transvestite. Wasn't, it wasn't a trans... It wasn't even a transvestite. It was just, what was it? That was Eddie Murphy. Oh, Divine Brown was a woman. It is a, a woman. A, a I'm woman. cutting all that out. Yeah. But it was a beige. It was a beige. <laughs> um, on the flip side, Brad Pitt looked great. He did look good. Divorce suits well, He's been him. like hanging out in Malta or something. You know, when does just... Brad Pitt look bad? I mean, when he, he looks bad a lot, actually. <laughs> Here's a thing I know you're sick of, Sean. So if you want to talk about this... Uh, Sophia Vergara and what they do to her at every this award show. This poor, brilliant, talented, highest paid actress on television. Every award show, it's one of two jokes. It's either she has big boobs or she can't speak English. So this year we went with number two, which was, you know, instead of saying an annual tradition, she was anal. talking about the anal tradition. And it's like, I mean, it's a why one does she shtick. agree to this? It's a one shtick. <laughs> they, why does she, I mean, I don't understand the negotiations, but... Why does she need to do this? It's so sad. It's not funny. No, it's not. It's demeaning. It's like... Mm. Um, speaking of shtick, was Goldie Hawn in doing a shtick with Amy Schumer? Or was she, or was drunk. she drunk out of her mind? I kind of hope it was a shtick because it was great. Well, <laughs> if it was can't sh- wait for that movie. Looks hilarious. Here's the thing. If it was shtick, it was great. If she was a fucking mess, then she was a fucking mess. I feel like it was shtick, but... Yeah. It felt like under rehearsed stick. I thought it was great. I mean, well, you also, I mean, I don't know what what Goldie Hawn's deal was that night, but Goldie Hawn is the queen of like, you know, making dumb look. That's true. Authentic. Yeah, in 1986. In the 60s. I don't know. Yeah, going Laffin. back. She's an Oscar winner, by the way. And Laffin. So Cher. Yeah, and Cher was excellent. Cher's in that film. excellent in Moonstruck. <laughs> um, uh, I think it was the first day that popped into my head. <laughs> so Watch it, um, buddy. Uh, the best presenters by far of the night were uh, Steve Carell and Kristen Wiig. <laughs> yeah. By far, they were so the funny. funniest thing of the night when they had their uh, whole discussion like, of animate oh, their animate first film, the, the horrible, Fantasia Day. Yeah, and like all the, the last horrible, time I saw my father, I didn't speak to my. I didn't speak for two years. <laughs> okay. And we put down my dogs. And then all grandpa. three, <laughs> and they were all like three's company characters: yeah. Chrissy, Jack, Jack, and. Uh, Is that what it was? Yeah. I missed that. So people were saying that Steve Carell and Kristen Wiig should host. Like, no, because they're too dry. Like, I think it works for a four minute bit, but I, they don't have. I can't see them hosting. The funniest presenter is always the one that they're like. Oh, that person host next year. Uh, let's get some other things. Right, you already talked about hidden fences. Yeah. You know, hidden fences strikes me as the kind of thing that before Twitter and Facebook, yeah. everyone would just accept. Sometimes people just say the wrong thing. But now Jenna Bush has to give a tearful apology. For it's, yeah. it's the new Adele Dazim. Yeah. I think it's a little unfair. <laughs> Adele Dazim was really weird though, because at least hidden fences are like words of things that are involved in the categories. <laughs> like, you, know? Like it's, you know, we can forgive it because it's like, okay, we get why you made that mistake. You right, know? right, right. They did a little tribute to uh, uh, Carrie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds. And that's nice because they don't usually do it in, in yeah, one. Yeah, but I guess they had to. It was so close and so upsetting. Well, zero Golden Globe nominee Carrie Fisher. Um, zero time nominee. <laughs> uh, 
Stallone and Carl Weathers presented for the 40th anniversary of Rocky. Yeah, I can't believe I made you win. It's, we can't. It's like, I wrote the thing. I wrote the thing. <laughs> I'm Awkward fist bump. Those are really good. A lot Those of plastic really good, surgery Rocky. up on stage. Like, hey, Apollo, read this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, Moonlight one. I better let the black guy read it. Yeah. Oh, that was Jesus. The thing. He opens it and he hands it to the black guy. Trust me. Had that word, had that, had that said Manchester by the sea, Stallone would have read the like shit Manchester out of it. Manchester by the sea. Maybe. Yeah, no. He saw in Moonlight, he's like, oh, I gotta give this to the black guy. Oh my god! Yeah. You know what else was kind of funny? The Chris Pratt in the first act, but that's a SAG bit. They stole SAG's bit. Which one? Oh, actors. For oh, the ac- oh yeah, that was funny. Well, it wasn't it's true. A golf like, he boy, hasn't had golf man. He hasn't had jobs. He literally that's just smoked true. a lot of weed and bummed around. He got no. discovered waiting tables. Yeah, he worked at like a Bubba Gump shrimp. Yeah, huh. like and yeah. I read a whole Entertainment Weekly interview okay. about it. Yeah. So you know what? Him lying about that—that that was damn good acting. It was very good acting because he's had job jobs. He's had job jobs. We've all had job jobs. So let's talk about this before we talk about the bad things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Viola Davis gave uh, an introduction to Meryl Streep. A lot of inside jokes. A lot of inside jokes. I mean, that's fine. Oh, but I thought that that, that really, her introduction was Oh, yeah, but I think it moving. said a lot about Meryl. And it said a lot. Well, Meryl can cook the stage. And I, it also, Meryl Streep is someone who knows everything. Like, she literally knows everything about everyone. So the whole thing she's talking about with Viola Davis about, like, the southern cooking. Oh, yeah, or the whatever. Ho- viola. Was it the, uh, viola. <laughs> the, uh... I played the viola, so I say viola. <laughs> yeah, talking about her collard greens, and then Meryl Streep's got a better recipe. Oh, yes, yeah. Of course, that was, you know, so like, or the I, apple pie, yeah, the pippin' uh, apples, yeah. And great. then, you know, I mean, yeah, she had knew what she was going to say about all those actors and actresses about their background oh which like, was fabulous she also strikes me as the kind of person who if like you were lucky enough to work with Meryl Streep One and day. she would like she would know facts about you she has I mean to be that great an actress she has to have a great memory anyway right. so she like she strikes me as the kind of person who like you tell her something she remembers it about you or she tries to remember and she's doling out all, even about people like Ruth Naga and stuff oh, my great. favorite and then is, she corrected herself she's like no uh, Ireland right uh, yeah Yeah. and my favorite is when she said Ryan Gosling because Ryan Gosling didn't realize they were like I guess moving on to the guys <laughs> now and Ryan Gosling was like like the face he made, like what's Meryl Streep going to And that's what you have to love about Meryl Streep. The way all these people, whenever she said their name, like looked at Lit her. Lit like, up. Like Meryl Streep said Said my about name. Me. Yeah, like, yeah. Wow. And there's something just so great about that. And then she gave, she moved to the Trump portion of the speech. Which was amazing. Which I thought was great. And people, I always hate when people say, Actors shouldn't be able to say. Well, it's the same it. people who voted for Ronald Reagan, actor for oh. president, and reality star Donald Trump for president. But, okay, okay. But the other thing, it's like well, they're citizens of the country. Yes. Can I can I actually say yeah. something about that? Because I do. I actually have always been fairly against um, award ceremonies being platforms for political conversation. Okay. Until now. We live in a totally different fucking time. You have to take whatever platform you can get now. See, I, you know I, what I, I mean? don't think Meryl Streep said a, a lack for a platform, though. No, but I mean, yeah. she. I mean, but, I'm just saying, yeah. like, I've always been like, I, I was even, I like, even if I agree with them, like. Now, she wasn't was, reading off a cue card. Did she just have that member? Like, she just knew. Well, what she she, has, she said she's like, I'm old, I have to read. And oh, then she okay. like, oh, put, she but then she like, it. put it down. Yeah. yeah, because she knew it. She, she knew, knew it. it. She was, yeah. she was off she's book. She's off book, yeah. yeah. Um, But, I mean, look, the thing the is. Her husband had to hear her practice that speech 20 times. <laughs> um, you She know, probably knew it, like, after one take. Yeah. And I don't think what she, here's the thing. One, it's her Lifetime Achievement Award. She could say whatever the fuck Whatever she wants. It's the Cecil B. DeMille Award. Let's, let's put that in context. Well, it's the Golden Globes Lifetime yeah. Achievement Award. And I think Spielberg's won that four times. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But so she also, you know, I don't think what she was saying was so controversial. We should support the press, press and we should have empathy. For she people. was, am- it was amazing. But the second it was over, mm, overrated. I mean, we knew it. We yeah. said oh, that. No. I like, waited. He's gonna, and I couldn't, gonna, I, we even said the words. When's he going to call her overrated? He's bet he's going to call her overrated. And then the next morning, Trump called her well, overrated. You know, he had to get sleep early. He caught up on his DVR, woke up at 6 a.m. and just binged that thing. He didn't want to do commercials. Like, he, someone needs to stop, take his tweeting rights away. Okay, I'm going to say this. I saw Florence Foster Jenkins. It didn't. I didn't really like the film. Uh, Meryl Streep is good in it. She's always at least She's good, if not amazing, great. You yeah. know. You know, and she's she's very good in Florence Foster Jenkins. I wouldn't pick it as one of the five or six 
since we're in a very crowded Best Actress race, I would pick it as one of the best performances. However, she is nominated for a SAG Award because she's fucking Meryl Streep. She's Meryl Streep. She's mm-hmm. fucking Meryl Streep. So let me ask you this, sure she is. Sean. Yeah. Did that speech get her an Oscar nomination? No, because the nominations have already been submitted. Oh. And all the voting is done for the nominations. They just haven't been announced yet. So that's the thing. It doesn't Why change. Why do they nom- wait until the 24th to announce them? This is the longest they wait. Why'd they wait so long for Queen Elizabeth's coronation? <laughs> oh my <laughs> that's god, that's good. That's, no, so yeah. the nominations so cannot affect the nominations, but it'll affect voting. I don't know why they're waiting so long. Ernst and Young has to count votes by hand. Who knows? Hanging Ernst chats. Young and Putin. Yeah, hanging chats. I don't know why, but the voting for Oscar nominations are done. Okay, fair enough. So yeah. it, then my theory of this... But she could still, because she's Meryl Streep, and they and just checked the box. she was nominated for a SAG, and yeah, maybe they checked the box. Um, I mean, maybe. She, well, we'll have this conversation again if she gets nominated, and when I say, could she win because of her speech? Her yeah. speech was so good. So good. So good. <coughs> like giving her a win would be an F you to Trump kind of thing. Well, she already got for the Iron Lady, so. I did not <laughs> like that movie. She's great in it. I did not like that movie. And I would have given it that year instead to Viola Davis. For? Um, a, a fucking shit pie movie. Um, oh, The Help. The Help. The shit pie. The Help. The you mean we're, shit we're, pie. We're, Two we're, slice? Where lovely uh, white girl Emma Stone learns a lot about herself. Yes. <laughs> Courtesy of the Civil Rights Movement? I think you're being a little hard on it. Nah, movie's about a white girl getting it is, it's, on yeah, the backs of her black helpers. It's, I have some issues with that movie, <laughs> But too. I think the black characters are strong, Octavia Spencer and Viola Davis. Oh, yeah, they poop in a pie. Movie. No, I mean, there are, they are, the characters are strong, but the movie, I have issues. The movie's highly problematic. Side too. It's about a white girl getting ahead. It was a better movie than The Iron Lady. Okay. Which is why I'm like, Meryl Streep's great in The Iron Lady, but she didn't make me like The Iron Lady. I still hated the movie. Mm. So that's why I was like, give it to Viola for the help. (laughs) Okay, so the host this year was Mr. Jimmy Fallon. (laughs) Jimmy Fallon, host of The Tonight Show. And right off the bat, the teleprompter was down. The teleprompter's down. Russian hackers. The greatest sin of the Golden Globes that was it that the teleprompter ever came back on, so we had to listen to Jimmy Fallon tell his milk toast, lame ass jokes. Jimmy Fallon is the worst. First of all, he can't vamp. He's supposed to be a fucking comedian. Teleprompter goes down, vamp. You know who could have vamped? Tina Fey and Amy Pola could have vamped. You know who could have vamped? Ricky Gervais. And you know what else those people had? They had fucking bite. Jimmy Fallon can't commit to a joke. So he makes a joke about how Batman vs. Superman sucks. Guess what? We all know Batman vs. Superman sucks. We all went to go see the sucky movie. But then when it's done, after he makes a joke about it sucking and everyone laughs, he has to kind of under his breath go like, well, I kind of like the movie. Because God forbid you take a stance on literally anything, Jimmy Fallon. You know who takes stances on things? Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, fucking Conan O'Brien. Seth Meyers. They take oh, stances on things. And you can't even take a stance on because you're afraid. What are you afraid? Oh, ben Affleck won't come on my show anymore. He will because the fucking Tonight Show. And how you're the host of the Tonight Show, I don't even understand. Then you start doing Chris Rock impersonations, telling maybe your better jokes of the night as Chris Rock. It all it made me do is wish Chris Rock was hosting the fucking show because you know what? He's a fucking comedian with fucking bite. He knows what he's doing. And then don't get me started <laughs> yeah. on your fucking like sing songy bullshit, particularly uh, uh, Chastain on the Red Main or whatever. <laughs> Don't get me started was amazing. On, on that, which, by the way, that is that is like Uma Oprah territory. That is Letterman Uma Oprah territory. That fucking song. And then what are you, you're riffing on Michael Keaton's name for a half hour? Oh, my God. All these jokes. This is ridiculous. Your history of playing it safe and the history of us wanting to think you're a good fucking singer. And that's why you, Jimmy Fallon, are this week's enemy of the podcast. Go fuck. Fuck yourself. Conan O'Brien should be the host of the Tonight Show, and you fucking know it. Well, at least his Chris Rock bit went on for a good, like, three minutes. Oh, my God. Okay, now. I you, liked the opening number. You, I like Jimmy Fallon. You privately told me that I, you liked Jimmy Fallon. You thought he did a good job. I know, and now I'm, like, getting publicly shamed. I feel like <laughs> it's about to happen. You're getting James shamed. Could you I love tell me Fallon. anything I said in that rant was wrong, though? 
about the thing about how he's got to be so safe with his jokes and that he can't commit to like, oh, God forbid he makes fun of somebody and like sticks to it. Like he has to go back. I mean, it's just a different type of humor. Like Ricky Gervais like roasts everybody. And I love that. And Jimmy Fallon is sweet and gentle. And I love that. And I, I thought mean, the opening number was fantastic. You just want him to tussle your hair. We're not asking. I want to marry Jimmy Fallon. I don't want to marry Ricky Gervais. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, my whole thing with Jimmy Fallon, it's not even the Trump thing. Uh, uh, that he was like, he n- helped normalize Trump. That's not even the thing that bothers me. What bothers me is I just don't think he's funny. You can accuse a lot of people of normalizing exactly. Trump. Exactly. Saturday I, I just, Night Live. Exactly. And I find them funny, and I watch them, but that's the thing. I just don't find Fallon funny, and we've talked about this on the show in the past, about how playing beer pong with Betty White isn't a joke. It's just playing beer pong with Betty White. Write a fucking joke, write a fucking skit. And this is my problem with the tonight. Well, at least his like monologue was only three jokes long. I, the opening, yeah, because can you deny that the opening number was the amazing? opening number was the best part? And guess what? It's the part that was pre-recorded and acted because it didn't it rely on him having to be out there on a stage doing something. Billy I think Bobby he's Brown at. did more rapping than he did, uh, you know, anything else in that opening number. Yeah, why was I he mean, in the back of the van? Why did they put those kids in the back of a van? So because creepy. that's in this opening number, though. The timpani players in the back of yeah, a van. Yeah, but children in the back of a van. I thought that was funny. I'm scared for those Stranger Kids things. It's I really not bought- Buffalo Bill. It's not like the back of a van van. Oh, we used to wear a size 14. Was, Whoa. <laughs> can you help me? Was she a big old fat person? Was she, oh. Was she a big fat person? Oh, that's good. Oh, wait. Put, was she a big fat person? It's pretty good, right? <laughs> Put the lotion in the fucking basket. Put the basket. lotion on the skin or else it gets the hose again. Put it in the fucking basket. This is good. We should, we're just, just going to do, do, do the Buffalo do. Bill show. Uh, yeah, please. Because like, I like, it feel like the heat from both your stares whenever you make a Jimmy <laughs> Fallon comment. And like, I, was, I like Jimmy Fallon. Well, what do you like about him? I think he's funny. I think he's an affable fellow. I think he's adorable. He's, an a, ev- he's an every man. They say he's an alcoholic. So is every man. Uh, I, 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 I like. I fantasize about what song I'm going to lip sync when I'm a guest on his show. That's James Corden. No, it's not. No. It's oh, which Jimmy one's? Oh, Fallon. Carpool Karaoke. Never mind. No, not Carpool Karaoke. Well, that uh, too. I don't know why I said that alcoholic thing, but they <laughs> do say that. Horrendous. They do say that. That's why he keeps falling and hurting himself. Yeah, that's what they say. That's why he keeps falling and hurting himself. That so he's drunk. Well, Jesus, that's sad. Help the guy. Uh, well, you know what? It's God. You're a horrible human being, Will. I'm not going to help him. Fallon's on his own. Yeah. He, he made his bed. He can lie in it. Jesus. You know the thing? I mean, yeah. The, I like Jimmy Fallon. Ba- I always have. His I opening was good. Don't. His opening was good. Although I brought it up to my father He's a great today, interviewer my, on tonight's show. Uh, I think so. Yes. Is he a better interviewer than Seth Meyers? Is he a better interviewer than Stephen Colbert? I, is he a better interviewer than Conan O'Brien or Jimmy Kimmel? I say no. I have to say I prefer and I... I can't even believe I'm going to say this because I call Seth Meyers. I, I've been in love with Seth Meyers forever. I call him my husband. Does he, does, he aware of he, this? He, is his wife aware of no, this? No, but that doesn't matter. But um, he, I, I, I prefer Jimmy Fallon as a host of a talk show than I do Seth Meyers. Okay. Um, I don't know why, but Seth Meyers still now, had me on your show. You know, the opening number, the Golden Globes normally don't do these no. recorded. Did this just steal Jimmy Kimmel's thunder for the Oscars? Because that was something that could have... They could have easily done that for the Oscars. So now, does he have to go back to the drawing board? Um, that's Although the Oscars usually does more of a montage. Yeah, but this is going to be a tricky year to like. I still think, but I still think the best Oscar host was Billy Crystal. Oh, back except in the for when day. he came back that one year. That no, was, but like yeah. back in the well, day the when 90s. they rolled him out as Hannibal Lecter, that Franco was Hathaway. Great. Oh, horrendous. <laughs> Let me tell you what. I didn't even care for Alec Baldwin and Steve Martin, and Steve Martin is my love of my life. They were fine. Does they he were, also know that you're married right. to him that you call they me? Were, no, he's just He's your grandpa. He's your granddaddy. The, no, he's Let me tell you what. Um, yeah, the, the, Steve Martin and Alec Baldwin, they weren't anything great, but they, they, they were serviceable. The Franco and Hathaway were terrible. But it was genius. They were horrendous. In retrospect, it was beautiful and brilliant, you know, after the fact. I mean, we, Chris James, Rock last year was phenomenal. James Franco is the single worst host I've ever seen of anything. <laughs> I liked Steve Martin alone better than him and Alec Baldwin. I would agree yeah. with that. Um, I because uh, that was the year Bjork wore the swan, and he came yes. on afterwards and was like, "I was going to wear my swan." I'm a little disappointed we never got that Eddie Murphy uh, 
hosted Oscars we were supposed to get. I always thought Justin Timberlake would make a good host. Oh, he'd be great. Yeah. I think I think he would be a great host. I think Timberlake because he's got he's got good comedic timing. He's got a little song and dance. Like Ryan like, Reynolds would be a good host. Ryan Reynolds. Well, Hugh Jackman I thought did a good job when he hosted the Oscars for the yeah. same reason I think Timberlake would be a good. Uh, you know, yeah. would be a terrible Oscar host. Russell Crowe. Yes. <laughs> Neil- I want to see that. Also. Neil Patrick Harris is a good host. I didn't care for his Oscar hosting thing. I know he does a good job with the Tonys. He but does the, do a better job the with the Tonys. That's I think true. was a was a different animal, and he wasn't prepared for it. Was it like a John nocturnal Stewart. animal? What was it? A nocturnal animal? It was a nocturnal because we watch it at night. That's oh, true. There you go. I can't um, wait. This is my football season, though. I love award season. Yeah, I love award. Are there any females like? Would we want? When was the last time Ellen DeGeneres hosted the Oscars? Whoopi. It's hard, man. I can't even imagine. I still, well, to me, Tina Billy- Fey and Amy Poehler. The Oscars. They it'd be oh yeah. I'm, I'm thinking thinking people, oh, they'd be great. Yeah, who would be a good female host? Is that the question that they could bring in there? That's a good because I don't see Samantha like a B. No, she's I, not a movie star. I don't see a Amy Schumer or a Sarah Silverman wanting to host, or maybe they're great in like bits, like kind of how Corell and yeah. Wig were. But I don't know if they'd be good hosts. I, Amy Schumer might. She'll host something at some point. I think, let's see, who would be a good host? Emma Thompson would be a good host. She would be well, a good host. That's outside the box thinking. Yeah. That's but, way outside the but box But, like, out, outside the box in all the let, right ways. Let me say this. Uh, I don't think Anne Hathaway was a bad host. Yes, I thought, she was. I oh, thought yeah. Franco was... I thought Franco brought her down, and she was desperately trying to overcompensate. I feel if she was... I feel like they were both trying too hard. No. He wasn't trying at all. I don't, think he knew, I don't even think he knew he was there. I just want to, like, now say things and incite him, because he gets so upset at me. Okay. Jimmy Fallon, I love him. Jimmy Fallon, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I just Fallon. did that just to get a rise. Okay, we always like to end on a weird note, and I'll, let's let's move away from the Globes. And back to Donald Trump. What's the weird note? Love. Um, uh, uh, a oh. Donald Trump themed restaurant opened in the heart of Iraqi Kurdistan after an owner heard the president elect's promise to arm Kurdish forces to help defeat ISIS. He was so uh, ISIS. He was so moved that Trump's going to arm the Kurds to defeat ISIS. He wanted to open a restaurant called Trump Fish. It's in the city of Dohuk in northern Iraq. It specializes in, oh, how am I going to say? Maskouf. Maskouf. Crispy grilled carp, which is the country's national dish. Um, Seeing him as a man of action, Mr. Zawadi, the owner, has designed the restaurant's logo showing Mr. Trump with a lightning bolt haircut. Um, So, Megan... When in Iraq, yes. will you eat at Trump Fish? No. No? No. Got to support the Kurds. I think I'd eat a Trump Fish if I was in Iraq. You don't want fried carp? <laughs> I mean, You would go for the photos of the napkin. Come on, of course you'd go eat a Trump Fish. You, you have me? to eat a Trump Fish. I don't think I would eat a Trump Fish. It's like the McDonald's of Kurdish-controlled Iraq. Okay, exactly. let me tell you. Exactly. I feel like if I'm in Iraq, I would be... When in Iraq... I would be very <laughs> cautious about where I'm eating and some weirdo American themed Donald Trump thing. I would somehow feel as like, well, it's safe. No, it's not safe because fucking ISIS is going to bomb it. That's right. Can I get to a serious? Can this weird? <laughs> can this weird note end end on a serious note? Go right ahead. Um. So, like, at some point, like. Terrorists are just gonna like bomb and attack Trump hotels, right? Yeah. Oh, to yeah. incite him. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. That's, they'll they'll open a, fire in the Myanmar Trump hotel. It's yeah. gonna happen. They're going to like this is going to happen. Yeah. Yes. They're just gonna go crazy, and he's gonna lose his fucking mind. Yeah. They're and we're gonna, gonna be like, target. no, we're not going to war with Myanmar or Indonesia because they shot up your hotel, of which you are a twenty-five percent stake owner. They're going to go after these hotels. We got a big bullseye on our back, yeah. and its name is Trump. And on that note, Megan. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. I had a great time. Uh, so once again, tell the people where they can find you. Oh, at uh, Megan underscore Hayes on Twitter and Megan Hayes Actor on Instagram and MeganHayes.net. Sean. You can find me at the Sean David on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you should follow me on Instagram because I, I I do good grams. You should follow me on Instagram. Oh, I will. Yeah, I'm sure I he, will, too. I'm sure Fine. he already has. Good. Done. You can follow me on Twitter at... 
<laughs> the real. <laughs> the real Will Link. Um, Sean, tell us about next week's guest. The Chargers are moving to Los Angeles. Uh, that's official. So now we'll have two shitty football breaking teams. Breaking news that's not breaking news at all because no, now you've this happened to... days ago. Uh, next week we will have on Jessica Gonzalez Rodriguez. She is an opera singer mm. and she is a wonderful person and extremely talented. And we are going to get, uh, you know, we're going to culture you up a little bit. You're going to learn about some opera. Will she sing for us? She could. Mm. Yeah. Can she sing a note that will break glass? No, she is not Mariah Carey. Okay. But we can probably do an aria from Abduction at the Seraglio. Um, And the week after that, we have a comedian on. Uh, yes, James Grendel. 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 I don't know. <laughs> uh, he is a Canadian, much like Ryan's Gosling and Reynolds. Like all the nicest people. Yes. Huh? And, As Meryl said. Uh, he is an actor and a storyteller and a very, very funny person and uh, a Canadian above all else. So he will be on the week after that. <laughs> above all else. Above all else, yes. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Uh, next time we record, will have the inauguration happen yet? No. No. I've okay. got that marked on my calendar. Okay, We're going to talk about it. Day of woe. Uh, and on that note, for the Will Sean Podcast, I'm Sean David. I'm Will Link. Megan Hayes, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. And we're finished. We're finished.